you know sometimes it's not that you don't know where to read but you end up trying to avoid reading too much because people love reading eh? you know people like to read a lot and uh, most especially when they're in a desperate situation they want to read bible thinking that reading bible will solve their problem amen praise the lord there are things that we still need to look upon to implement a change i remember i know i could remember whenever there's a problem some family members even the ones that doesn't remember god that doesn't go to church that doesn't want anything to do with the will of God. Immediately they have a problem. They go, they go and cite their Bible where they're hiding it. Thinking that if you read the Bible, your problem will be over. Praise the Lord. If you are looking for a job, go and read your Bible. Amen. The most time, the most important time to read the Bible is when you don't have a problem. Praise the Lord. Anybody that is sick does not go to school, right? Don't worry, I'm coming somewhere. Anybody that's sick that does not go to school. But when they are sober and fine, they go to school, right? But we only go to the school of God when we are sick. Academically, we do not go to school when we are sick. But spiritually, we go to school. We, want to we, we now want to study the Bible, thinking that reading it will solve the problem. Amen. Who told you that? So try to read it when you are fine, not when you need help. You don't read the Bible when you need help from God. You read the Bible to learn. Amen. So... That brings me to the life of Christianity today. It is time to change your life in your season. It is time to value time. Praise the Lord. You know when you don't value time, you become late in everything that you do. Amen? When, 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 you, when you don't work with time. You see, every day in a month has a time. If you don't value such time, you are missing out. I still want to remind those who keep on praying, Father, everything that the enemy that is holding, that belongs to me, release and die by fire. Amen. It is time to walk in your system. It is time for establishment. God did not call you to keep you. God called you to make you. God called you to prosper. God called you for you to walk in provisions that he has created. Amen. Everybody need to succeed. Everybody need to succeed. Everyone need to make it. But when a mind or when we are absent minded focusing on how we are being lied to in, every, in, in the hand of God everything is there. Yes, everything is in the hand of God but it will be left for you to walk your way out. Amen. For example, you are in this place, right? Call a church, right? You came in, isn't it? Do you know you can still stand up and be angry and walk out? Amen? Is it God that said go? No, God didn't tell you to go. It's your anger that motivated you to go. Everybody walks out of a thing. Everybody walks in a thing based on the decision. Sometimes even when God is stopping you, you still decide to do what you want to do. Amen? Now, when it comes to the will of God and the prosperity of God, what motivates you? That did enable you to do things by fire, by force. Praise the Lord. Our times and seasons are no longer valued. Our times and seasons are no longer valued. We are only praying, being too spiritual, forgetting that sometimes you need to stretch your mind and work hard. We always believe that church has prosperity. Yes. You prosper spiritually, then you work it out physically. You'll be made spiritually and work it out physically. Amen. Stop using prayers and fasting and be covering up. When well, you want to make it to carry Bible and read, it's time for a change. Amen. It's time for a change. God will change your life, yes. For him to change your life, he will give you power. He will give you strength. He will grant you determination. He will set your soul on fire. I will never rest until I finish cooking. Amen? I know that there's a way we'll be exhausted. You doze off while you're cooking and food gets burnt. But I have seen people that have this problem that whenever they're cooking, they sleep. They set alarm. Don't you do that? 
You have never done that when you are when you are very very tired. You set an alarm. In case if you do something, the thing we just do. Pee, 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 you woke up. Amen. Something must be alarming you, telling you that your life must no longer be like this next year, next month, next 24 hours, the next minute. Life must change. Praise the living God. Not to be changed by laying hands on you. When God has changed you, you are resurrected now. Now everything that has to do with resurrection must take place in your life. Amen. Amen. If you just start with the book of Proverbs chapter 26, what did he say? When you read, you will understand. Do you see a man, verse 12, who is unteachable and wise in his own eyes and full of self-conceit? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Verse 13 says, book of Proverbs chapter 26, verse 13 says, the lazy person who is self-indulgent and relies on lame excuses said there is a lion in the road. You have excuses of not making it in life. You have excuses. You have many excuses. If you fail, you, you blame church. If you fail, you look for pastor, bishop, apostle to blame. You look for brother or sister to attack. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. The problem with us is that when we fail, we become frustrated. And when we become frustrated, there is no more light of God in us. Amen. Prosperity has something to do with anointing. Prosperity has something to do with our life, our divine life. If it's not there, you become frustrated. And when you're frustrated, you will no longer know the light of God. Amen. If you can understand that, I heard a servant of God that said that after God, money. Praise the Lord. And they say money is like, in a way, it, 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 like, how do I put it? It's, it's like a kind of, the way he explained it for a human understanding, I want to explain for you not to misunderstand me. In a way, it's like money and God are a bit equal in the life of every soul. When it comes to God, we take it personal. When it comes to money, you take it personal. And they say money is the root of all evil. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. What are we trying to say? You see, all these things, we pray, we do everything, we do this, and you just tell yourself, eh, I'm not interested, I am humble. Listen, anybody that tells you that they are humble, they don't want to be rich, they don't want to prosper because of humility, that person is a coward. Very much coward. You are too humble. You don't want to be rich. You don't want to be known. Even if you don't want to be known, get it and hide it. Stop giving a silly excuse of not making it in this life. Because if you keep on giving an excuse, you will blame everybody, including your own mother. You including your own father. The reason why I didn't make it is because my father left my mother. Praise the living God. The reason why I didn't make it is because nobody was making it in my family. I think the same case came up. Aren't you ashamed of yourself by saying that the same family covenant is attached to you? I didn't make it because nobody's making it. I think my family is scarce. For how many years you have inherited what they do, what the, what they do not have? You have experienced the God more than them, God Almighty. Your God, the God of miracle. Praise the Lord. You have touched God's grace more than another person. And you still want to align yourself with them, trying to compare yourself with everybody. No, you don't need to compare yourself with everybody. You distinguish yourself and begin to walk in the ways and in the will of God. After that, be established. Amen. God does not just give you anointing. He gives you ideas. He gave you strength. He gave you energy. He gave you vision, foresight. Now, not just foresight, not in a bad way. He put desperation inside of you. Okay, let's say he placed a hunger inside of you. That's why you go around that you, you, you're hunting for a job. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He put a hunger inside of you that whenever you see a car, you want to drive it. He put a hunger inside of you that you want to live, you want to have your own house. Amen. You want to buy your own house. He put all this hunger knowing that he, there's a reason why God gave you all this thing. How, you must desire to buy a car. You must desire to do this. You must, because you know that when there's a desire, there must be a hard work. Praise the Lord. How can you desire something and you cannot work hard to achieve that goal? Let's be honest. If you like, think, take it personal. But it's time for growth. Amen. Amen. I don't like a ministry that is too spiritual. Calling the name of Jesus Christ. After calling the name of Jesus Christ, they say, Lord, let your will be done. The will of God is already here. 
What you need to do is to pick up your fruit. Eat the fruit and go and plant your seed. Praise the Lord. In the village, when you don't have a mango, what do you do? After eating a very sweet mango, what do you do? You take that seed and plant it in your yard. Isn't it? Amen. We establish a tree to bear fruit from another tree through a fruit. Amen. I know how we do it in our place. When we eat fruit and it's very nice, my father will take the seed and plant. He has to dig. How many of you are digging? We need to dig. Be the mind to dig. Look at it. He's talking about the excuse. Verse 13 is talking about the excuse. He said there's a lion. He said there's a snake. There's a scorpion. You know the reason why I'm not making it there is because there's this and that. There's poisonous. There's battery acid. Hallelujah. There's a pyramid everywhere. Everywhere is wrong. That's why you don't make it. You're a liar. You're a hypocrite. Against your life, your destiny, and your generation. Amen. The reason why you can't make it is because everybody is bad. Even if everybody is bad, God has assigned you to make it. You're a divine project. Amen. Imagine. You are qualified to be a manager. They employ you to be a manager. You said the reason why you don't want to be a manager, to be an ordinary employee, is because all the employees, all the other people that employed in your company, they were insulting you. Excuse me. They gave you a managerial position. No? You know what it means? More money. Meaning that you'll be any times four of somebody's salary in that same company. But now you are trying to quit. You no longer want to work hard. You no longer want to be distinguished. You no longer want to stand out because all the members of the company, they are fighting with you. Have you ever seen manager resigning? If you resign, your money reduces. Most Christians have resigned today. That's why their manifestation cannot increase. Praise the Lord. I think manifestation is all about prayers. Keep on praying. You keep on praying. You keep on praying. People will make it. You will die of poverty. I'm not insulting anybody, but I'm telling you the truth. Don't work hard. Sit down. God can do anything. With God, all things are possible. God's time is the best. God is a great provider. God is a great provider. He provides through you. Praise the living God. God could have been releasing fruit from the heaven without planting a tree in the garden. But what happened? There must be a tree for us to eat fruit. What have you planted? It's time to change your ways. Praise the living God. It's time to change your ways. They keep on telling you, spirit, spirit. They keep on telling you, repent, repent. Now I'm telling you, repent in the area of you, knowing that you are a blessing in the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. If they don't know what to do, they will hypnotize you. They will manipulate you. They will blackmail you. You, you live in fear. It is time to come out of your fear. Because a lot of people don't want to move. Praise the Lord. Every soul here, a lot of you are inspired. I promise you. Can I start asking questions individually? Everybody here, all of us are inspired to do something. Amen? Amen? The Bible said, the lazy man in verse 13, the lazy person who is self-indulgent are a lot of lame excuses says there is a lion in the road. The reason why you don't want to walk that path is because there's a lion. You are afraid to walk a path way that God has shown you. Praise the living God. You know how to go to a shop to buy clothes. Nice one. You know how to go to a shop to buy herpes. Nice one. You know how to go to a shop to buy turkeys. Nice one. You know how to go to a shop to buy makeup. Mascara and scatterat. Nice one. You know how to go to a shop where somebody died to buy new clothes for burial. Nice one. You know how to go to a shop to buy clothes for every event. Nice one. But you don't know how to go the way of your life that God has revealed to you. They built a mall that has addresses. Every part of your life that you need to inherit, there are addresses that you need to locate to get something beautiful. Just the way you go to the mall for shopping. Go around, shop for your life. So that when you say praise the Lord, you're not saying praise the Lord because people are saying it. I keep on telling you, you need to say praise the Lord because you have an encounter. Amen. I can say praise the Lord with faith. I can say praise the Lord because they are playing music. I say praise the Lord because I have an encounter with you. You must never praise the person that you do not know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You don't praise the person that you don't know. Amen. That's why somebody will look at me. If you don't know me, you say I'm wicked. I'm this, I'm that. You don't know me. Praise the living God. You don't know anything about me. 
Hey, is this, is that? Oh, maybe it's this God. What? Listen, can, can, I still want to touch this part. Can God stop revealing me to you and reveal your destiny, your riches, your wealth to you? How can God reveal you to me and you're not making it? You see something wrong with me. You see I'm bad, I'm evil, I'm fake, I'm this. Praise the Lord. Yes, I'm a sinner. After you have finished revealing me to you, what did you benefit? You are still broke. You don't even have a father. We don't pay that in this church to sponsor the ministry. Very soon I'm going to leave you here. Then you enjoy the church. Praise the living God. Imagine God is revealing this man to you. His bad character. Why can't God reveal your money? Where's your money? Where's your house? You have been, can I start? You are there suffering and be her, fighting with your family members. And God is giving you revelation of a man who is preaching to you. I don't care what God is revealing to you. Praise the living God. I keep on telling you, I am not good. I am not. Listen, that's why I'm no longer a pastor. I am a brother. I am not an angel. And I will never have wings. But for the fact that God is revealing. Tell God, please, if you are revealing the fakeness of this man to me, at least reveal 50%. And reveal 50% of my destiny. Amen. How can God reveal my wrongdoings to you? To, are you sure it's God? Because if He's revealing everything to you, He must reveal your destiny. Amen. Where are you? What are you doing? You can't just go to church, sit down here, be broke, doing nothing. Your mind is not working. Amen. That is laziness. We are not talking about it. It's just when somebody lies in the bed and refuses to wash plate, they say, You are lazy. No, no, not that. When your mind is lazy, it's better eh, for you to be sick. Eh? I have a sharp mind than having a lazy mind and being healthy. Praise the Lord. Most of you are addicted with stagnation. It's addictive. It's addictive. Most of you are addicted with a controlled life. Why God supposed to establish you work, in limit, you, you work without limitation? You are afraid to lose your salary. If you lose your salary, your whole world has come to an end. Praise the living God. You think your salary is a world. That is that nonsense. No matter how much they are paying you, you are still broke. Do you have money? Did you pay your tithe last month? Are you going to pay this month? You are, you are broke. Let this not come out of. Praise the Lord. No, I, I, we can't lead people. Do you know that Jesus Christ was also a businessman? Oh. Why is Judas his treasurer? Oh, you think he's only for minister? Why? Excuse me. If it's only for, like, if Jesus Christ could not count his own money, when time comes, I will teach you very well. Why, if somebody becomes your treasurer or financial assistant, just know that you can no longer count your money. Praise the Lord. How many of you here, is somebody counting money for you? Has somebody said counting money for you? And you say you belong to Jesus. But Jesus has a treasurer. Who was even stealing until he sold the cow? Praise the Lord. Are you telling me that Judas was not stealing money there? Praise the Lord. So, what do you think? Do you think he's offering money? No. The guy was a businessman. That's why whenever he's talking, he uses a farmer as a parable. Businessman as a parable. He uses a lot of things as a parable. He uses tree as a parable. Still, your Bible, you will see. Why is he using all this? Because these are the hard work of people that will still come into what? Harvest. So when you look at it, we use it as a parable. Because people are working hard. Amen. Amen. I'm working hard to get a job. No, don't work hard to get a job. Work hard to create a job. Amen. Most of you are called for, to become a destiny changer. You are there to become a destiny changer. And there you are. You are looking for somebody to change yours. That's an error. Amen. You are not making it because you are not praying enough. Nonsense. That's nonsense. It doesn't make sense. You know what I said? No, I'm, I'm not trying to insult you. Nonsense is an English, please. Don't forget. It, nonsense. It doesn't make sense. No, you're not making it because we're not praying enough. No, we're not laying hands on you enough. That's an excuse that was said in the book of Proverbs chapter 26 verse 
13. I still want to ask you, what is your plan not to remain the same at least a few months from now? What's your idea? God's giving agenda. The only thing we focus on is, I'm anointed. I can't wait to be ordained. Go and buy a collar. I will ordain you during Thanksgiving. I'll make sure you're here. What do you want me to ordain you? Okay, I will ordain you during a day of good way. You want it fast, fast. Day of good way before Thanksgiving. You're anointed. Even if I put you in the leadership forum, you won't make it. Yeah? You want to be a leader. You want to be selected as a leader. Let me not insult anybody here. Praise the living God. You think being a leader in this ministry will make you prosperous? Ask of our leaders we are broke. <laughs> ask, ask them. Leaders, am I communicating? Are we not broke? Do I have petrol? <laughs> the other time was I not asking money for tires. Yes, I'm only asking money for house rent. Are we not broke? <laughs> leaders, most of all, do we have offering today? Be honest. They want to be in leadership for them to prosper, thinking that being a leader will bring prosperity in your life. You, leadership ne, is better you work out because it's going to keep you bound. Because immediately you enter that leadership forum, you end up being a full time minister. So you better run away from the calling. <laughs> Nonsense. You must ordain you. You want to be a leader. Hey. I kept the church for a very long time. They are choosing not that they didn't choose me. God, let me choose you. Go and choose yourself and make it and bring money here. Amen. <laughs> want to be a leader. When you see people, when you see people laying hands on the others, you are craving for it. <laughs> when am I gonna start laying hands? When you pass the mall, you don't crave for people for the owners of the shop there. You don't crave to become like them. The only thing you crave for is hey, I wish one day I will, I will get a job in pick and and become a cashier. You want to work in, in, in what do call it? In a tellers. That is what you are craving for. You crave for laying hands here. You are craving to walk, 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 walk in pick and pay. May God, who has established your hand, open your eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have an excuse. I didn't make it because of this. I didn't make it because of that. A lot of people will say they never made it because of me. They were really saying it. People will still say it. Amen? Am I holding you? If you leave this ministry, that will stop you. The time you choose not to come to church for two months, one month, did I call your phone? Did I say come back to church? But you decided, no matter whatever that's going on in your brain, you are that, you are that your brain that dance, no brain, brainless brain. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you decide when to come back to church. Did I chase you out? Did I call you back? So you have your decision. You have the gut. You have everything to leave and come back the way you please. But when it comes to your destiny, you are pointing and kissing finger at me. Praise the Lord. I'm not the reason why you came back. I'm not the reason why you left. I didn't say leave the child. I didn't say come back. But when it comes to your destiny, now you will go and tell them that you didn't make it because I said you will not make it. The time you left the child, that's say I said you, will, you must leave. No, you didn't give them such news. The reason for everybody is that when they fail, there must be an excuse. Continue using your excuses and not work hard. Amen. Most of them that doesn't want to be educated here. You still have opportunity to go to school. Eh? To be civilized. To meet up with the other part of the world. And you're there wasting time. Thinking that prayer will prosper you. Prayer will graduate you. Eh? Brother Ken's hand. Let me know. Let me not go deeper. Must change your life. Whether you do not go to school, you will make it. Who, who told you that? If your mother told you that, your mother is your worst enemy. Amen. If your father has ever said, no, if you, if you don't go to school, brother, can we church will make it happen. That person is your worst enemy. Look at them, as young as you are. Do you know that you're getting older? Amen. How old were you before COVID? Amen. How old are you right now? Amen. Most of you, like we were looking fresh and smooth. Now we have wrinkles. Look at me, I have wrinkles now. Amen. Praise the living God. We're already growing gray hair. Tell them. You see these people, they think they're still a child. By the time we touch, you know, it will look like a dream when you, you enter in adulthood. I realize that there's nothing that you've achieved in this life. And you say that I'm insulting you, that I'm being harsh. I'm not being harsh. I'm telling you the truth. You can't make it. And if you do not make it, don't you ever blame your mother. For the fact, you see that mother there? 
Don't blame that man. For, that, for the fact that that woman gave birth to you, ne? and allow you to suck that breast, you are even biting the nipples. If you have, like, they, they, they sacrifice their breast and the other part of their body. That's why the other guy came to pay damage. You remember? Did your mother told you that they came to pay damages? They sacrifice every part of them. Now you're sucking everywhere. You're damaged everywhere. And now you're blaming them for not making it. You made it out alive on this earth. And you still want to blame them. I didn't make it because my mother did not make it. Who told you that? Because my father did not make it, that's why I didn't make it. Do you know how many sweat that this man wasted before you came? Maybe it's not in the winter. <laughs> Praise the living God. <laughs> Amen. If you calculate the pocket of sweat, just for wrestling, and you finally came, and you say, your father is owing you, owing you what? No, you, let me not start. Praise the Lord. Excuses. It is time for you to start planning. Say, it is time. For me to start planning. When we talk about Abraham in the book of what? Genesis chapter 12. What happened? Even after God finished calling Abraham, God gave Abraham ability, an ability to make it. If we talk about that Old Testament, that time there was no church. Abraham didn't go to church. Do you know that? Do you know that? Abraham did not enter church to shout fire. Release and die. I command you for meat and die. Sit down and die. Stand up and fly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Die by fire. You are busy ruining your makeup. Do you know? That makeup is very expensive. Except if you bought it in the street. Look at the beautiful hair that you just did. You are shaking it and scattering it. Imagine. Who told you that you are going to eat when you get home? And you are shaking your body for, to, to, I mean for you to be. You know there is a way you shake. Your stomach becomes empty. You are shaking it. Die by fire. Die by, by the time you finish. When you get home you will be disappointed. Nobody has ever cooked. Praise the Lord. What are we saying here? It is time to come back to our senses. Maturity is the key. Wisdom is the key. Praise the Lord. It is very good and very vital to be in God's presence. But God's presence cannot do everything for you. Amen. Can I say? God's presence, sometimes he will not provide for you. He will command you to provide. Abraham didn't go to church. That's why I went back as far as Old Testament. The Bible said that God spoke to him, right? The prophet did not come to him, right? Nobody casted that evil spirit. Forget about that. Don't misunderstand the message. People think that when a man of God prophesied to them, they make it. Amen. Go and walk for your life. Walk for yourself. God is always giving us inspiration. Do you know that hundreds of you are very, very, very blessed and rich here? But the problem, most of you, addiction is killing you. That's why you are here in a rehabilitation center. Hmm? To get rid of addiction. Amen? You are in rehab right now. Did you see the book of Genesis chapter 12? What did he say? What did God say to Abraham? Mm -mm 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 -mm. If I start from verse 7, then the Lord, are you in Genesis chapter 12? Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I will give this land to your descendants. So Abraham built an altar there to honor the Lord who had appeared to him. God, God said to him, I will give this land. Land. You know what it means when a man has a land? Huh? You know what it means when a man has a land? Praise the Lord. I still want to ask myself. The only way people can be selling their land is maybe the husband and wives are very old now. They don't have strength to work anymore. But the young person selling a land, you know, you're selling a land because you don't have money, so you want to use the money. Do you know what it means? God said to Abraham, I will give you a land. You know what it means to give a man a land? To give somebody a land? To give somebody a land is that now you have to cultivate here. You must cultivate and harvest. Don't pray to me. I give you a land. Amen? Hello, I'm giving you a land. Imagine. Let's make it physical. Let's make it physical. Let's make it physical right now. God gave you a land, right? 
And now you are calling upon God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, come and cultivate this land. Father, come and plant banana, apple on this land. Oh God, come and buy cows and put on this land. Father, I command by fire, by force. In the name of Jesus Christ, come and plant spinach here. <laughs> Did you hear me? If you have wisdom, you need to go deeper. Because I might not have time to explain. God gave you a land, you are still calling him to come and plant. God gave you that mind, that mentality. Gave you that vision. Gave you everything. He allowed you to see. If God really wants to do it by himself, he will not allow you to see. If you want to do it by himself, he's not going to give you those ideas. If you want to do it by himself, he's not, not going to give you those talents. Most of you are talents. Talented, I mean. You know there are people that when they create something, eh, you think they learned it from someone. Amen. The talent you have, don't you think that God could have withheld it, withhold it from us and now do it by himself? Praise the Lord. I have given you a land. So why do you call me to come and plant corn for you? To come and plant, uh, what do they call it? Everything. Vegetables, orange, name them. Fruit. Why must I cultivate the land? I give you the land. God gave you you. Amen. He said, I give you the land. I will, he said, I will give this land to your descendants. When you own a land, what, when you look at your own land, what do you do? Okay, most of you don't know what, what I mean by land. Eh? Okay, we look at your yard. We are not in village. We look at your yard. What do you do? They say, you, that, that portion will be good for spinach. The spinach that when you plant it, is suffering from kwashoko. <laughs> I want to use this as an example. Most of you, you know, you have plant spinach in your yard and you consider this person is suffering. That's why you just say, ah, this thing doesn't work, let me pave. <laughs> and you end up paving, right? Be honest, you have planted spinach. You will discover that this, this, this spinach is very sick. <laughs> most, of them, like, most of them are very short that when you see long spinach on the street, you ask yourself, but it's not the same spinach. Amen. The problem that most of us are facing is that you plant without maintenance. A lot of people are not planting, but some of you are planting without what? Maintenance. Consistency. That's the key. You plant without plan. You plant without finding the right place, the right soil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What did he say? Adam and Eve, they have to till the ground, tilling the ground. They have to break the ground. You plant without breaking ground. Amen. You also plant with your spirit involved. Some people plant because they are planting, not because they are interested. Do you know that you can do something and you are interested to do it with passion? It works. But you do it because other people are doing it. It does not work. This is where you end up mistakenly differentiating yourself with people. Amen. It's just because we don't have much time. That's why I'm bringing everything together. How do you do your things? Do you have passion for what God has revealed to you? Do you, do you do it with your spirit? Because when your spirit is not there, it's not going to work. That's why I started with the vegetable you plant in your yard. Can we do a competition? Most of you that have not finished paving their yard, can we all plant spinach and take a video and show each other? You will discover that there are some people are not even interested. You just planted it. Imagine you are planting spinach in your yard, but you are still buying. This is what happened to us. Imagine God has blessed us and we're still praying. I know that somebody must criticize me for this. It's no longer everything you must ask God in prayers. You do something, then you ask God for grace. Sufficient grace to sustain. Sufficient grace to keep on moving. Praise the Lord. You can't have a seed and keep on praying for germination. It's impossible. Abraham, God gave him a land, and the Bible says, then he moved on from there to the mountain on the east of Bethel. When you read the Bible, do I even need to read it? Mm, 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 mm. Do I need to read it? Yeah. The time he was moving, God already promised him something, right? Are you with me? But if you see verse 10, if you see verse 10, 
This is a man who God promised something. He said, now there was a farmer in the land. Are you in verse 10? Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. Now there was a farmer in the land, and Abraham went down into where? Egypt to live temporarily. For the farmer in the land was oppressive and severe. A man that a promise was made to. But there was a farmer. You know, most of you don't no longer believe in promises of God. You no longer believe, believe in God's promise. Why? Because by the time God made a promise and said, You're going to be this, you're going to be this. And before you know it, crisis comes. We give up. Instead of giving up, have a plan. Amen. If you look at Abraham, he was working with a plan. He was not waiting for God. God has visited him, isn't it? God has given him a land, isn't it? Now there was a farmer in a land, he has to move. I don't know how I will break it to you, but if I was talking about this land of a thing, now let us stop looking at, at land and realize that the land we are talking about right now in this 21st century is in us. Amen. There's a farmer in here. Move from where there's farmer and go to somewhere. If there's a rain, let's say sometimes, you know sometimes where we are staying, when we are coming from there, we discover that it was pouring here during the rainy season. Sometimes when it's raining that side, when we come to here, here, it's very dry. And we'll be asking ourselves, ah. sometimes when you're driving on the road, driving from a dry ground, you see people coming with a car that is wet. Praise the Lord. Meaning that there was a rain somewhere. There's no rain where you are. Abraham had a plan. You must learn to strategize and stop giving excuses. That's why I started with the book of Proverbs. It is time to strategize. There's a famine. The Bible said there was what? Now there was a famine in the land. There was a famine in the land. Can I talk about us? Even if there's a crisis wherever you are, in everything, that you are planning or achieve to do in this life, learn to strategize. You don't give up. Everybody faces famine. Everybody faces crisis. But that does not mean we we'll stop. I've seen people giving up, having a great idea, having a great agenda. I will do this, I will do this. For how many years, for how long will you say, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. Sometimes learn to humble yourself and shame yourself. Praise the living God. You know what I mean? I just say condemn yourself. So sometimes you need to attack yourself. Look at yourself. Wait now, what have you achieved in this life? How old are you now? Where are you going with this life? Sometimes you ask yourself, when you die, who will bury you? That's why we're busy contributing money with the burial society, which is not wrong. If you're a millionaire, you wouldn't do that. Would you? If you're a millionaire, if you die, you tell them where to get money, they will bring money and leave half change after your burial. The worst part of it is that they will take some. They won't finish it. If you tell them to buy a casket of 20,000, they will buy a, cask a, a coffin of 5,000. Knowing that you are dead, you're not going to do anything. Praise the Lord. Our life is to leave something great behind. Not insurance policy. Not insurance money. Our mission here on earth is to leave something great behind. The same money is the root of all evil. If you make it evil, it becomes evil. Amen. Praise the Lord. How can you die and your children are fighting for one bondage house? One RDB house? I'm talking to young people. Leave the old people alone now. Praise the living God. You're very young. Look at yourself. Ask yourself, if my parents die now, am I going to be fighting for this house or will I have my own and don't mind, uh, mind my business? I'm waiting for addiction. Salary. How much are they going to pay you? Oh, church, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. God is good. Oh, in fact, don't you... Can I say it? I don't care. Don't you ever come here and give a testimony of getting a job. Hmm? Are we clear? You waited for 10 years, 15 years. Praise the Lord. Now, after 15 years, I finally got a job. How much are they paying you? 5,500. Jesus Christ, God forbid. 15 years of sitting at home and they call you to give you 5,500. It means that you have wasted your time and your life. Can you say, God, God has really yes. blessed my hands? Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, yes. every works of my hand yes. will surely manifest yes. 
to the glory of his name. Can you say amen? amen. Abraham has to plan, plan, planning. He has to strategize. He didn't stay in the land where there was a famine to cry. He moved down. Most of you, you, are, you end up being broken. You know what, I'm still recovering. Yo, the famine was too much. Everything was dying. So what, what, do, you, what do you expect me to do? Uh, let me recover first. Recovery. Recovery. Did you say recovery? Amen. Do you really want to recover? So when you go home, you see that Bible. When we talk about who, who again, uh, uh, this guy, what is his name? Is it Jacob? Now, if we talk about Jacob, what did he do? The father blessed him. He still has to go and work. Did you hear that? The father blessed him. The father blessed him. The father was rich. He still had to go and work. There was no church then. Can we forget about all these things? Yes, we are serving God here. But you see all these things. We go to church and church is telling us, uh, if you buy this, your life will change. If you buy that, your life will change. If you do this, your life will change. Praise the living God. I still want to teach you about Solomon's sacrifice. There are differences between being defrauded in the church and contributing for the work of God. You need to know that. Did you hear what I'm saying? You can't give, no matter the amount of money you give in the church to make it, the more you give, the more broke you become. There are differences between defrauding your money and you contributing for the work of the ministry. They can tell you, okay, 200, 200. That's not much. What does that's not much? But when they keep on telling you, do Solomon's sacrifice, do Abraham's sacrifice, do James' sacrifice, do apostolic sacrifice, now you must do Protestant sacrifice, now you must, oh, now they, they know the target. Praise the living God. Every producer or production company have their market target, marketing target. If you are believing God for marriage, 12 months from now, 12 months from now, 12 months from now. What did I say? 12 months from now. If I be the man of God, 12 months, 12 months from now, you're going to be married. Are you listening? Immediately you say, Amen. And this 12 months has to come with seed. You must make a sacrifice of every month of these 12 months. 12,000. Am I talking to a living soul here? 12,000 start coming. Out. Excuse me. No matter what you give in the church, without working hard, you won't make it. If you like, give money and say, call it a, a marital seed, marriage sacrifice. Without a good character, you will remain, both man and woman, you will remain unmarried till you die. Everything needs hard work. Be ambitious about everything and not greed about everything. Be ambitious and don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. We have, like we are so much great that everything they tell us that, and we forget about fellow workers we are not church yet it's a ministry can we forget about this church thing hallelujah if you are believing God for this do this and this if you are believing God for this if you challenge God and do this and this add this one and this one praise the living God hallelujah now the, imagine this oil is this if you use this oil no we, sometimes I keep on telling you we do prophetic action right but now, they are giving you oil of oil to pour it in your lotion so you can get married. <laughs> so your manager can give you promotion. Praise the living God. <laughs> oil of oil. <laughs> 2,500. You pour it for your manager to give you, to give you promotion. Your manager will not give you promotion. Your manager will toast you. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oil of Oil of favor to get married. Now you're walking on the road, you're looking for my small boys. You're saying, <laughs> You say, hey, This oil of favor is not mature, though. <laughs> now you go back to the prophet. The prophet will tell you, No, you bought the one for small boys, buy the one for big boys. <laughs> Praise the living God. After buying the one for big boys, Jesus. Big boys is not, look at it. The, when you look at him, see the size. You think, This is not a big boy. This is supposed to be a, this, this is where a big boy lies. You understand? Now you get the one that is not big boy, but big boy. You understand? Praise the living God. And now you say, man of God, this one didn't work. Now I want you to come and take this one and back it up with Solomon's sacrifice. <laughs> that 
is the ultimate sacrifice. Are you a sacrificer? Tomorrow you say, oh, pastors are thief. You don't go to church because they took your money. Nobody is taking your money. You know, the problem I have in this ministry is because I didn't take their money. That's why they will use another thing to accuse me. I think I should take your money. There's this car that I saw on the road. Do you know it? Land Rover Defender. Yo, yeah. That one. You know, you just throw your phone on the dashboard, the phone starts charging. You press something, the tow bar just do like this, like a snake and come out like this. I think I should take your money. When you accuse me, then I'll feel good. Amen. Praise the living God. Imagine the church. I, I'm going to deal with those of them that are not serious with God. I'm telling you the truth now. Praise the living God. I don't have anything to do with you. But if you're not serious, I will milk you. Is in this ministry. If you play with the ministry, if you don't have anything, you must sacrifice your TV. I'm not talking about black and white TV. You sacrifice your plasma so we can sell it in Cash Crusader. Any amount they give us is fine. You must sacrifice everything. If you have your phone, what do you have? Phone, put it on the altar. So if you are not serious, you must make sacrifices. And I will also tell you about Solomon's sacrifice. You must bring it before I attend to you. So it's better you attend to yourself right now. Praise the living God. When you attend to yourself, you will not have business with me. Do you understand what I mean? So Jacob, if you see it, what do you say? If you see the book of, uh, the journey of Jacob, if you see the book of Genesis chapter 29, how did it start? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, okay, read your Bible, I'm not going to show you. If you, if you read the, okay, if you read the Genesis chapter 28 first, from verse 10, this is where God, God himself met Jacob. God met Jacob made a promise to him. But for the fact that God made a promise to Jacob, Jacob still went to work hard. He went to serve. Serving. Praise the Lord. He went to serve. From Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10 to, yeah, from verse 10 you read from there. Amen. Now the journey began there in Genesis chapter 29 and Jacob found himself doing something from, uh, from uh, he came from a, a rich man's house but you are still, you are serving. You are not just serving, you are not just taking care of cows, animals. You even clean the things, you soup yourself low, just to make it. Everybody must work hard to achieve the promises of God. Amen. You work hard. You work hard. Hey, you work hard. Hallelujah. You work hard. Come out of your addiction. You work hard. Christians, they have given you an addiction of you sit there. They are telling you that God is coming. God will do it. God will do it. God. God will do it. God will do that. God will do that. God will. I see. Imagine, imagine. You, you are still staying in RDP house and they are prophesying to you that in six months and you are buying a car. Excuse me. Well, how much is your salary? Praise the living God. There was a time I, I can't remember how I said it. I said, where I said it. Prophecies comes when there's a direction. Immediately you are on a track. Prophecy will come to push you. Are you listening to me? Prophecy only comes when you have something to it. Imagine, you are very, I mean, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to help yourself. You sleep from morning till three o'clock. You wake up. You know there's a way you sleep too much, your mind will block. Ask people that have made it in life. They don't sleep. There's a way you sleep. These people that sleep for a very long time. There are people that when they sleep, sometimes you get scared. You open the door, you look. <laughs> when you look, if the first knob, if, if the stomach moves, <laughs> you just say, oh, okay, thank God. You don't know that people have come to check you to know whether you're dead. You don't know. Now, when they come, if you try to move, they say, oh, they, they go out. They are that when they sleep, ne? we discover that spiritually they're sleeping. Physically, they're sleeping. Mentally, they're sleeping. In blood, they're sleeping. In their system, they're sleeping. In their journey in life is also sleeping. Their prayer life is sleeping. Everything about them, their vision also is sleeping. So when you wake them up, you have to wake a lot of people up inside them. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's time for awakening. Amen. He said, you sleep. There's a way. Listen, if I sleep for more than seven hours, I fall sick. Like I will feel it. My body becomes heavy. 
How do you survive? Those of you that doesn't like waking up. In the morning when you see the sunlight, you cover your head with blanket. Because under the blanket is dark there. Praise the Lord. If the family member is disturbing you, before you even go to bed, you lock your room with a key to make sure that nobody comes to wake you up. Praise the Lord. It's time to be alive. Amen. Do you know that most of you, for the fact that you think you're not making it, do you know that the information is also a key? If you're not well informed, you're not going to make it. But people that need to be well informed want to be well like they want to be prophesied to in a very good way. Uh, you know what? Oh, you see that church you're attending? I see that man as a fake. That man is not a real man of God. Who is real? Nobody is real. I'm not even real. Are you with me? I'm not even real. Like as I'm standing here, I'm not real. I'm just being used by him. Praise the Lord. After being used by him, I can still betray him. I can never be real. That's not like, ah, that man. Those people that gave you prophecies that told you that I'm not real, what solution do you have? I, I, wanna, I want us to face the honest truth. People that gave you a solution that you are a leader, not me now, or everywhere you ah, are, whatever, is not real. After telling you it's not real, you must leave that church. Stop attending that church, not this one. You must leave that church. The preacher there is not real. Did they give you a solution? They come and attend my own. So after attending their own, did they give you a solution? Are you better today? Did they push you? Did they motivate you? Did they inspire you? Who are you now? Praise the living God. You know, there were people that they told that I was fake many years ago. They left the ministry. I was waiting for them at least. I want one of them to buy a car and embarrass me. Rather, they are posting people's cars, calling it their car. Somebody just accommodated you, post in front of the house, calling it your house. They will kick you out, you're just squatting. <laughs> Praise the living God. That they borrowed you a car does not mean that you have a car. Do you have a car? If you have a car, say amen. Oh, okay. You don't have a car. Amen. Those people, listen, when somebody prophesied to you against somebody, and it's not prophesying to you, pushing you, telling you what God has for you and how you're going to make it. It's not real. Hey, come here. Come here, prophesy. Come here, come here. Come here. I want to tell you. You're going to clap for me and prophesy now. Your mother is a witch. Uh, <laughs> go deeper, Papa. Look at as old as you are, a man. As a man that's supposed to be a family man is lifting up his hand. Eh? What if the armpit is not clean? <laughs> Your mother is a witch. <laughs> There's a black devil in your house. I'm talking nonsense now. But I'm prophesying. <laughs> your sister is right in complexion. Am I right? <laughs> what do they call you? Jabu. What is the nickname? Jabu Nandos. <laughs> <laughs> Who gave me Jabu Nandos? Brother Ken. I'm trying to say here. Please tell me the truth. All this nonsense that I spoke here, how is it going to help this young man? If you are here for prophecy, turn the fire setter. If you're angry and not prophesying to you, go and work hard. Walk your behind out until you make it. Walk until every part of your blood drops until you make it. Praise the living God. There are people in this ministry that I can no longer pray for. If I am no longer praying for you, count it all joy. I appreciate God and know that you are free. But people get offended because I'm no longer praying for them. By not knowing. So since this man is no longer praying for me, which way should I go? This is where, even if you do not know, you need to be mentored. Do you know what they call being mentoring? They're not mentoring you on a spiritual level, no. Hey! What is wrong with church? Hey, he's my mentor. You are sitting around the mentor. You don't have money to buy on this. 
You don't have money to buy makeup. You don't have money to buy bread. And your mentor is still appreciating you, calling you my daughter. You are a witch. Do you know the time I said, if you're around me, if you're not making it, stay away from me. Yeah. There's a reason why. You know why? Because wherever I'm going is where you must go. Mm. If you really want to be with me, you must go. If I fly, go and borrow wings. <laughs> be flying first. Did you hear me? Borrow wings, be flying first until you grow your own. Praise the living God. Yeah. If I grow three legs or five legs, borrow from others. Praise the living God. What are we trying to say? A mentor cannot mentor you spiritually and teach you spiritual things and not teach you how to fish. So being a mentor is teaching you everything from spirituality to merchandise. So in this ministry, if you are not making it, please go and take back seat. We don't want you. And I'm being honest. So don't come here and close your eyes. Cry blood to Jesus. You are crying out because you want heaven to hear your voice. Those people that think that God does not exist. Have you ever had plan in your mind and achieve it? God is not existing. So God, you are, you are a thief. If you say God does not exist, you are a criminal. Because you want God to go rob the bank and bring money in your house. God does not exist. How hard have you worked to know that God does not exist. How hard have you listened to know that God is not existing? How hard have you allowed yourself to be processed to know that God is not existing? How high have you, how have you been equipped to know that God is not existing? You want us, you want me to be your mentor? I'm not afraid and ashamed to say this. I can never be a mentor to a coward. You know what I mean by a coward? It's not an insult. When I mean a coward, a coward who always believes in me, only in spiritual side. I must give you spirit. If I give you spirit, you'll be hungry. Praise the living God. Don't come around me and speak and seek for spirituality. They're mentoring you. You carry their Bible, you're following them like a puppy. They're driving Lamborghini. Even when they're driving, they won't give you a lift. My car is coming by God's grace soon. The number plate is no lift. Go and buy your own. Go and walk hard. And do what? Buy your own. Even if it's raining, that one with no lift, I'll pass. Because, you know, that time when you come from a car wash, you, 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 you wipe your feet on the ground. Now, I mean, the car is already raining. You want to enter. I didn't enter that car with the rain, so you're not entering. Come buy your own. Praise the living God. Amen. Now I have a boss. If you want, can I enter, money to enter. That one is very dirty. But this one, no more lift. Work hard before you accuse me. Amen. Amen. You, you can't be, you can't say you have a mentor. Can somebody come so I can use as an, as, a, as, a, as an example? Come being broke. I can't teach you. Somebody, a leader or whoever cannot teach you and you still not make it. That's why I run away from people. Praise the Lord. If you are ready to make it, I come after you. And when I come after you, you must make it. Amen. There's a lot of things to... Okay, let us... Time, 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 time. time. Mm, book of Proverbs. Go back. Mm. Ah, where is it, please? Mm. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Yes. Go to Proverbs chapter twenty-five. Yes, yes, 
Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes. Mm. Can you see verse 13? No, not 25. 24, I mean. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 24. Hi, you see. Can you see 24 verse 13? Huh? Are you verse 13? Amen. Huh? Amen. You know, have you ever... <laughs> you, you, you get to a point where... Hey, Mara, this is not fair. Wait, who told you there is money in your account before you swipe that card? Imagine you are buying something, you are carrying a card, you are flexing. Maybe it's a new bank card. Shiny. Which one is golden color? Which bank is that? Huh? Yeah, standard. Yes, standard bank. You are carrying gold card. Flexing. Twe. Twe, 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 twe. You know, the way they tell us we look at those cashiers, they look at you as if you are so stupid. Like, you know that, that look is, where were you going? They look, what were you thinking? Do you think you're a magician? So you believe in miracle? They look at us and say, insufficient fund. Try it again. Insufficient fund. They tell that desperately. Try it again. It's an insufficient fund. My prayer is that your life will no longer be insufficient. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Imagine you're going to church and you're empty. They're talking about Thanksgiving. They're talking about the day of goodwill. All of you are about to disappear. No, I'm not on that yet. A lot of, watch. That sin has come, they're already disappearing gradually. And now the disappearance is excuse. Eh? From January till, till uh, until Apostle Nelson, I was being saying for tech, for tech, for tech, for tech. Now the season of Thanksgiving has come. And we say, no, this man told us for tech, that's why I, don't, I, I want to take a break first. You know, you know, most of you, know, whether you're old or young, the problem with you is that you don't know how old I am. Bef bef before, before, before you think you want to be smart, what makes me laugh when somebody's being smart is the stupidity. You know when you're thinking you're smart and I'm laughing? Just know that you're so foolish. Like, you know, just know that you are, you are funny. Praise the Lord. Insufficient life. That is what Christians are living now. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. You must be filled with prosperity. You must be filled with manifestation. You must be filled with every good thing that come from God. You have you I'm in the spirit. Bless you. Hey, my brother, do you have five friends here? Okay, let me give you let me give you an example. This is not a joke actually, but it is a joke. It's not a joke. I was once I was, I was somewhere in the mall, like sometimes when the road is busy, just by, I end up parking somewhere, like to cool off. So I parked somewhere in the mall. One man just came to me and said, Can, do I have small change to do what, 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 what? I was in the mood, good mood that day. I gave the person, I think, plus minus 20 rand. You know what he told me? Can I pray with you? Excuse me. First of all, he came and said, bless you. <laughs> You see? Yeah. It's an example now. First of all, you say, bless you. You are trying to show me that you're a preacher. <laughs> are you listening to me? Uh, and now, can you please help me with this disease? I said, okay, take. Mm -hmm. I said, can I also pray with you? It was not... Before I accept a thing, I must know where I am. I didn't... It's not because of my position. That's why I refused. I was like... I was not allowed, actually. I just said, no, thank you. Imagine if this guy sees me preaching one day, eh? he will think I'm evil. I said, no, thank you. Like, enough. you are saying bless you. Ask me for something, and I also want to pray with me to bless me. Who are you blessing? You can't bless somebody being broke. Praise the Lord. You can't, be, you can't bless someone being broke. Jesus was a businessman. Jesus was this business. The man that Judas was holding, that man, that guy was a millionaire. Remember his clothes was very expensive. That's why they were fighting for it. May you never live an insufficient life or in the name of Christianity. Amen. They're busy buying and buying and buying and buying and buying and buying. After buying, there's one of them, the husband divorced her. 
Why? This woman carried the children's school fees that were saved. Children's school fees. No, I say there are difference between being defrauded of your money and contribution. I mean, like, you, you don't touch your children's savings in the name of God's, God's, God's sake. Then children doesn't have future. This woman, the husband just lost the job. It, ha it, it happened in front of me. The woman carried the savings of her two children and go and offered it. After that, they were kicked out of the house. Everything went bananas. Praise the Lord. The people that you have given such, do you know, yeah, you can see it in my life, but you can't see me. You can't see me driving three cars, and you don't have a car, you want to give me 100,000. You're crazy. Praise the Lord. No, something's wrong with you. Are, are you listening to me? You can't see me with three cars. Let's say you see me with three cars. Good one. You don't have one. Praise the Lord. I want to give me, you say God says you should give me you should give me hundred thousand. I'm already driving three. How much are they? Living in a very comfortable apartment. How much are they? I you say you, you don't have anything. You are coming from RDB house. That hundred thousand is your opportunity to be to make it in life. And you say that God says you should give it to me because you're doing Solomon's sacrifice. If I were, if I'm not in the mood that I will take the money. But if I'm in the mood, I will insult you. Praise the Lord. It's time to grow up, it's time to expand. God gave us every opportunity, but we, mis we misuse it because we are being misguided. There's, excuse me. Challenge God. Challenge God. You want to challenge God and you're in debt. A car that you have not finished paying for. And pastor says you should give it to the church. <coughs> are you listening to me? You are not done paying. It's not your own, no. They say you should give it to the church. So you must give it, don't have the car, finish paying until you buy your own. Common sense. I'm saying too much truth now. That's why you don't like me. You know, when you, they say when you're too honest, you're boring. I'm boring you right now. By the time I bring the one that will ginger you, you vibrate and lose your mind. Praise the Lord. Look at it. Are you verse 13? Verse 13 is saying, I went by the field of the lazy man and by the vineyard of the man lacking understanding and common sense. The Bible calls it a field and vineyard. Meaning that we must have a work. We must work things out. But the lazy man who has a vineyard and has a field, what did the Bible say? And behold, it was all overgrown with thorns and nesters were covering its surface. And his stone's wall was broken down. The receiver said, this was said, this is the, a very good example where somebody has everything, but they're not making anything. Imagine you're having everything, but you're not making anything. A field of a lazy man, who are you? Who are you? Even if you don't have a job, wake up and be informed. Do you know that most of you are ashamed to put hand into something that will bring a blessing to them? Into something that will grant them a favor? Most of you, your pride will not allow you to prosper. I promise. It's not Satan. I'm touching a lot of things. I don't have time to put this in detail. Most of you, your pride will not allow you to prosper.